live around the world, this is Paper Cuts with Brad and Jay. We'll just get this out of the way here. Thanks for joining us on Brad's show. Yeah, thanks for coming to my show. You I did not say shenanigans. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you drinking already? No, I've just got water. Just got water. <laughs> Always looking smooth, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I do. I try to clean up for the show. Look, one of us has to. Come on. It's time to do root work with Tracy Cross. We are live. Whoa, happy Friday, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Paper Cuts, the only place to be on a Friday evening. And we have a show in store for you. This is the only reason I was able to get through work today, Brad, <laughs> knowing we had a show tonight because you know about my job. It's killer. I'm like, I got to do this show tonight. So I didn't care what happened at work today. I made it through. My name is Jay. Thanks for joining us. That's Brad over there. Enough about us. No one cares tonight. about us. I know, really. I mean, things are going to get pretty interesting tonight. Joining us this evening, the writer of Root Work, which, by the way, should be at everyone's library. I'm going to go, go ahead and go out on a limb here. I know we're only at the end of March, but this may be one of my top reads Dang. of the year. Making bold statements already, Jack. I know. I like and it. This, I like this it. is really just to make our guests uncomfortable and to live <laughs> up to <laughs> the show. But everyone, welcome to the show. Oh. Tracy Cross, thank you so much for stopping by. Tracy, what's going on? Don't forget, I got to cut that check for you, Jay. I know. <laughs> it's going to be in the mail tomorrow for me, right? Oh, word. You know, cash app. I was going to say, what does what, what you Venmo? We have a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. got a Venmo. <laughs> and the best thing is, there's two more books still left to read that haven't come out yet. For Yeah, words. thanks. thanks for that. Thanks, thanks for that pressure. Well, okay, I, I I guess we're done. Thanks, Brad. That was like the You're welcome. alley at the end. I mean, what was <laughs> thanks guys for being here. Appreciate it. Well, hey. <laughs> Tracy, what are you normally doing on a Friday night besides talking to two dopes with microphones here? Well, apparently my daughter thinks that whenever she's not here and I have to work on Saturday, I'm partying wildly and jumping <laughs> up on the couch. Yeah. And actually, I'm probably just laying in the bed reading or doing something non-productive on my iPad and because uh, I don't even get to watch movies. I'm, I've, I'm in my master's program, so I'm always mm -hmm. reading something. You know, they have like 85 million books that you need to read and then you have to write critiques for other people and stuff. So that's what I'm doing or falling asleep on myself and <laughs> realizing like at three in the morning, like my pants are halfway off and I have a face mask on my foot. What happened? <laughs> You know, like I have, I have like half chewed food in my mouth. Like I just fell asleep like this. Pizza crust is just hanging out. Yeah. And she's just like, Mom, I know you had a party. Like, I have a party. I well, party. it looks like a party. If you're if you're waking up at three o'clock with food hanging out your mouth, your pants yeah. halfway off, there must have been a party somewhere, right? Somewhere and the ghosts have come out and you know, set yeah. me up. But I'm like, no, crazy is fine. <laughs> Or that was just some hard reading for your master's program. That was some pretty in-depth stuff to make you just knock knock you out like that. That's just Honey, do not get me started. It's like <laughs> let's find all the books that Tracy doesn't like. <laughs> Never read those. Romance? Is there some romance in there? Yeah, let's have her read that romance. We, we, just, we discussed that, didn't we? We were like, like no romance, no sci-fi or something. No sci-fi. It's like this stuff is like, hey, do you need a map in the beginning of the book to yeah. follow along? Great! Let's read that book for Tracy. And I'm just like, I hate this class. So. You know, you know how much grief I get from him because I don't like <laughs> fantasy books or sci-fi books. I I don't like. I can't get into them. And he's always ragging me, like, you gotta check out this fantasy book or this like. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't get them. Like, simple fantasy for dummies. Like, I would totally try it. But yeah. I mean. My sister was like, well, you should read the George R.R. R. Martin book. So I'm thinking, all right, I'll soothe my sister. I pick up a George R.R. R. Martin book. The font <laughs> is like a seven. I'm yes. Just like, and what? it's like this thick. It's like. Yes. And they're like weapons, little baby weapons with like dictionaries in the back and maps in the front. Like, and that's yeah. just the introduction. That's just like book one yeah. of 27, you know, and you're like, what? <laughs> I, I looked at that. I started crying and I was like, I'm so sorry. I can't do this. I love you like a sister, but I can't do this. No. 
Yeah. Now just give me something super simple and stupid. You know, I'd rather go read like Great Day for Up or something. <laughs> Dr. Seuss and like, yo, I got it. I understood it. <laughs> 150 pages with 20 of them pictures. I'm good to go. <laughs> big pictures. Yes. In big font. Triple spread. I'm going to Triple spaced. <laughs> Did we lose Braddock? Brad froze over there. Oh, should we freeze too? No, it's just you and me now. All right, we got right. rid of Brad. We Prince we are just we are just by the way we are getting like some storms. I'm I'm in I'm in Columbus. That he's somewhere in Kentucky, um, and there's a bunch of rain coming through. So oh, wow. for those watching or listening, if we lose you, if you lose us, you know, there'll be a replay later. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll so pull, we'll pull them back in. Yeah. So I mean, aside from partying, you know, it, it is it is uh, Friday night. What made you decide to hang out with two dopes like us? I mean, you know, you were like, Let, let's just go. It, it wasn't like a dare, was it? Yeah, you <laughs> know see what? if you can survive. <laughs> I, I love talking about my work and I love Personal. talking to people about it. So, I mean, like, why the hell not? Why not, you know, come home and I got to put on my whole face because <laughs> at work today I just look horrible. Welcome right. back. Sorry, my hey. flickered out for like two seconds, kicked everything off. Auto power, yeah. I was just telling, I was just telling her and anybody listening that you know, we, we Ohio got some storms today, and you're probably getting some that's below us. So, I did that earlier while I was at work. It went off for like one second, but came right back on. So, hopefully, it stays like that. We yeah. missed you. Yeah, I'm we, sorry. We, we, we're, we're going to wrap up the show now. Thanks for. Uh, oh damn, has it been that long? <laughs> Make yeah. this sound. Two, two <laughs> hours later. Two hours. We didn't get very far, Brad. So you would go ahead and, and I, saying, I could go pick up my George R. R. Martin books over here and show everybody how small the font is. <laughs> oh my God! Please don't. I already you know. Horrible vision. <laughs> really? Yeah. I know. I just like I'm. I'm getting this close to it. I'm doing this. You know. I'm like getting a page magnifier and just running. Not it enough. Down. Not enough light for me to see it. <laughs> just oh my God, why? <laughs> I mean, we could probably rag on those books for like the next two hours, but <laughs> oh, you're hurt my, you're hurt my feelings, Jay. I, I love know. those books, <laughs> but I love right. you. I love you. So that's love okay. you too. We can, we can do the heart. I can't <laughs> we'll do it. Our emails back and forth. You all became best friends. Your love of Prince and your hatred of. Well, I, I was I was going to say, should should we go ahead and announce our guest for next week? It's George R. R. Martin coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, he doesn't watch this one. No, yeah, he would never but, wa- he would never watch any of our shows. Hey, if we get him to watch it, that would be fantastic. You know, yeah. that would be that'd be awesome. Hi, George. My sister <laughs> loves your stuff. I do too. <laughs> Not me, my sister. <laughs> my sister. I personally, I personally hate it, but my sister loves it. It's a half redemption, yo. It's like a half redemption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So root work is what we're talking about. <laughs> Right, We're, George. George is too popular. We don't need yeah. to talk about him. We're gonna talk about yeah. Tracy and her work. Right. Oh, and you say she's not as popular. I think she's. That's not what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm yeah. saying. Okay. Okay. But no, it, George so, has got enough money, y'all. We don't need to bring that. That's, that's right. Money. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been out for when did it come out? November. So now a couple months now. If you, mm-hmm. I can't do I can't do math. What kind of response are you getting? Are you getting people reaching out to you saying how great it is, or are yeah. uh, you know, getting because- get good reviews for it? Mm -hmm, Because I'm an idiot. That's why. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I, you know, I like when people like shoot me messages on Instagram and Twitter and they're like, oh my God, I just started reading it and I I love it so much. I'm getting really great feedback, really positive feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, I get like a lot of like, oh, you got to do like, you know, this, like there was one where it's like, you got to do a lone wolf and Teddy story. And I'm (laughs) looking at the screen like, I never thought of that. (laughs) <laughs> I was just so focused on trying to get to that book too and get that done. And then it's just, you know, people throw out random ideas or they throw out random quotes and stuff. And I mean, I love it. It's great. It's nice because, you know, at least people can look back and say, oh, this is something that this girl from Ohio wrote and, you know, it's pretty funny and we liked it. You know, I, I just, <laughs> I enjoy it, you know, because if you don't leave a legacy, like nobody will ever remember you. At least I would be remembered for some like hoodoo stuff. As opposed to like some of the other embarrassing things that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about those the second hour of the show. Um, That's the Patreon. Yeah, exactly. The Patreon exclusive. <laughs> so I mean, for so for this particular one, what what's the? 
and this is kind of general, what's the background? What was the inspiration? Why did you go in this direction to release this particular type of book with this subject matter? Well, my grandmother <clears throat> um, was talking about growing up in the parish okay. uh, mm -hmm. when she was younger. And it was one of those things where she really didn't talk about like a lot of stuff when she was little, cause she was like in her nineties, like 92. So, you know, that was a really long time ago, duh. But she just <laughs> really didn't talk a lot about it. So I had written a story and I shared a story with her and that kind of opened the door. And then she started sharing some stuff with me. And, you know, she shared things that happened to me, that happened to her when she was living down there. And I'm sitting there like listening, like, oh my God, I got to write this down. I need, I, I feel a story coming on because the thing is, it's like, I grew up hearing phrases and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that like everybody else didn't grow up like this, you know, it's like uh -huh. you split a whole bread and butter, you know, or you like, don't drink water that's been sitting out overnight, you know? And I'm just like, what are you doing? Don't drink that water. You know? And they're like, what? <laughs> you're like, yeah, no, you're water. Don't drink it. You know? And they're like, Tracy, you're nuts. And I'm like, I'm not nuts. I'm trying to protect you because I love you. But like <laughs> no one else grew up like this. So I, I realized that this is another thing that I could share from my family and from my past, you know, that once again, it's about leaving some of yourself behind when you're gone. Mm -hmm. And that's why I chose to share this. I did get more information from my grandmother. You know, um, the one true part in the book, uh, spoiler, is the sheriff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. And, and thinking about that time and how old she was, you know, yeah, that, that makes sense. So Yeah, that was, that part, that was yeah. Everything else was kind of just thrown around there. But I just, when she told me the sheriff's story, I was like, what? So then we have like the vengeance, the things that happen after that, that I was uh -huh. like, this is for you, grandma. This is for you. <laughs> Angry typing. Like the, <laughs> the most horrible, vile thing was the thing that's actually true. Yeah. 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 The, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing research. I was doing research for the book. And... Mm -hmm. It was just so interesting because you, you realize that like there's not really too many original ideas. So you're like, okay, I'm looking up like yeah. a book that's made out of human skin. And then I find um, a convict that was in prison, that was in jail. And he's like, okay, so I'm going to die on this day. So what I want you to do is take my skin to a tanner and I want <laughs> you to have my biography that I'm going to write. And I'm going to, you know, I want you to bind it in my skin and give it Ugh. to other kids to read to right. keep them from coming on this bad path that I'm on. So the sheriff's like, the hell? <laughs> okay. You know, so the guy's like, I'm totally serious. So he's writing this out every day. He's in his cell. He's writing, writing, writing. And the guy's like going around town. The sheriff's like, what, what the hell? Like, like you know, Rob, do you know? Like, I, I got no clue, buddy. You know, so... Then finally he finds someone that's like, I'll do it. I figure, yeah, I can, I can do it. Yeah, I'll do it. You know, just scrape that little fat off and we can make us a nice little book. And so he, he <laughs> guy like goes and he dies. And so the sheriff has these pages. So the, the sheriff's like, okay, here's the body. Do what you got to do. So then a tanner comes back and he goes, hey, we got some extra skin left over. What do you want us to do with it? And the sheriff's like, well, could you make me a pair of shoes? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, hey, you want some shoes? I got some shoes. So he wore these shoes around town like like this. these shoes were made from human skin. And you just kind of like, what? That's wild. What? What, what? what would inspire you to do that? But this is really true. I think there's like not so many books made of human skin in the world, which is pretty interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there's ways you can test it. There was like one whole book that I read where this woman, that's all she does, she goes around and tries to find all of the skin books, as I call them. But she just, there's not enough. So you just kind of really wonder, like, what is happening? But it, it's interesting. I like, I did like doing some of the research. I liked, I read a lot of Zora Neale Hurston. Mm -hmm. um, I was kicking myself. We're not coming around to her sooner when I was mm -hmm. 
like, you know, younger and stupider. But now that I'm older, I appreciate it so much more because. Did, did you ever like let her know that you were going to write something like this and then have it turn into like an interview? Does she wonder why you were writing stuff down? <laughs> No, okay, I'm going to sound like a total jerk, but my grandmother was blind. She had no eyes, okay? So, so she didn't see she the microphone in front of her when you were story, I grabbed my phone and I would hold it up to her mouth <laughs> while she was talking like <laughs> and I would tell my sisters and my mother like Shh, like don't say anything. I'm recording this. So she didn't know. That was going to be my next question if you did that. She just didn't know the microphone was in front of her. Oh, that's just. I know. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Like, does that make me a bad granddaughter? But I, think it's, I think it's great because I probably would have done the same thing. So. Yeah, I'm just like, and they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Tracy? And I'm like, oh, my God, you guys suck so hard. Like, just. <laughs> <laughs> they were ratting you out. <laughs> Exactly. And then, you know, one of the sisters will say something like, be sure that I get a copy of that interview that you're doing with your grandmother. And it's just like, oh, my God. Why? Oh, geez. It's cool, though, that you have her stories in her voice, though, like that, if you still have the recordings. That's cool. I am so happy that I have it. And I'm so happy that I thought to do that because I have, like, a memory, like, Ugh, like you would have thought I took all the drugs, but I can't remember. <laughs> thing. But I was so thankful that I thought that. That I just picked it up and I'm like recording it, sticking it under her. I think like in the back of her mind, she knew something was up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she knew. She was just playing along. She was playing along. It's, it's, it's like, it. Grandma, that was great, but can you say it again with a little bit more passion? You know, <laughs> second round two. What was that last part? You know, or just like, baby, give me some water. I just want this to be clear for the little thing exactly. that you have waving in my face. You know. <laughs> So oh, were her great. stories, did she talk about root work too, or was it just her living in the parish when she was younger? It was just her living in the parish and that, and um, they also moved like to different parts. I, you know, everyone has this, has a story. So like mm -hmm. in my family, my Southern family, my mom's from Arkansas, but they all, you know, you sit around and as a writer, I like to sit around and just listen. So mm -hmm. I sit around, I listen to people tell stories, and then I'll do my best to try and go back and write it down. So I have like little bits of information here, there, here, there. You know, there was one story that my grandmother's two sisters told me, and they said, if you tell your grandmother, I'm going <laughs> to kill you. And I'm just like, what? So Was that on tape? <laughs> I, yeah, I went back and I talked to my grandmother and I said, you know, your sisters told me this story. And I just need to get this clear. And she was like, what? You know, and I, I told her this story and she just kind of laughed so hard. She was like, damn, <laughs> I can't believe they told you not to tell me this. And I'm like, well, but, you know, is it true? And she was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't even like really answer yes or no. She's playing the fifth. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hmm, there's always something. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, my grandma's being cryptic now. Like, what is happening? You know, but she clarified some of the points of the story, um, which was interesting because she had a brother that was born with the seventh veil, like the skin over the face. So he right. could see things that had not happened. So, like, he would see things that would come to happen. So when he would be outside and he would have like these, these spells where he would be like, these people are coming up to our house. I see them over there. They have these guns. They're coming up the hill. Then she said her mother would go outside and throw a sheet over him so that he couldn't see anything. Like, so it would just kind of stop him from freaking out like that because he would really just go. And wow. okay. I was like, wow. You know, I yeah. can imagine. I mean, he died re relatively young in the house that they lived in and he mm -hmm. haunted the house. So that would have been fun. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the story that my great aunts told me were that um, they were playing, they were watching her play ball and the ball would uh, bounce across the room to her. And then she kind of catch it and bounce it back. And then it would, instead of hitting the wall, it would kind of just spin in the air. Right. <laughs> And then it would bounce oh, yeah. back. Like somebody caught the ball. So they were like, um, they ran outside. They're like, Katie Bay is playing with something in the house. She's playing with a goal. She's playing with a... The mother comes in the house and she's just like, now what is, what is happening in here? You know, little mischievous boy breaking dishes and whatnot. 
And the next thing you know, the mom sees this and she's like, oh, hail to the no. We are <laughs> And she like they moved from the oath from the you know Appalachians in Kentucky down to mm -hmm. Arkansas. She's like, we got to put water between us and this spirit because I don't know what's happening. So they just packed up the car and moved down to Pine Bluff. And you just are like, wow, it was that serious, you know? But in talking to my mom, I found out like the spirit was still in the house after that. So it's just really weird. What uh, what part of Kentucky are they from? Because I live in Kentucky. All I knew is it was the Appalachian Mountains. They lived up in there for a little while. That's mm -hmm. basically it. You aren't exploring now, aren't you? You're going to go up there and... I'm going to go find it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My sister and my mom went back to where the house was. And it was funny because my sister was like, uh, oh my gosh, you know, there was cotton everywhere my sister was telling me she got out of the car she's like stuffing cotton in her pockets like i've never seen my cotton you know, in her pockets. and i was just like what, what were you gonna do with the cotton she, i don't know i was stuffing it in my pockets and i'm like okay make a sweater <laughs> okay i don't know but i would have had the same reaction too i would have yeah. been running through the fields, you know, just, oh, look at all the cotton. And then just have somebody drive by going, oh, there's a crazy black girl running through a cotton field. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. We, we got to contact one of those uh, ghost hunter kind of stories and, and uh, uh, shows and have them go to the area and see go what investigate. they can find. Yeah, do some investigation. You could be on the TV, okay? We're already going to get root work. That's the beginning of root work on yeah. HBO or We're, Netflix. Yeah, There you go. We're oh, working on let's it. let's do it. Let's do it. I can. That, I can that's your end right I already there. had my ghostly experience. I already spotted a ghost and uh, told this guy off because I'm like, you got something stuck to you and you better stay the hell away from me, buddy, because you smell like there's a ghost on you. Like it is attached to your person. And whenever you come around me, I am feeling hostile and I just want to punch you because this ghost is stuck to you. And he was like, okay, well, we got to talk about that. The smell. He's like, well, no, it's not, you know. <laughs> gonna tell me this is what you need to do to rinse this experience off of you i'm like you better stay the hell away from me that's what you need. <laughs> tell me nothing i know what to do i'm some from i got the root work here not you <laughs> looking at me like okay crazy black girl wonderful you were so talking what, about that offline what's the smell though yeah. smelling like what does a ghost smell like i've never heard anybody say that they've smelled a ghost before yeah you, it smells like spicy tea to me it's it's like uh that's the only thing i can think of like we had um there was a ghost in my apartment when i was married many years ago and it was an old woman ghost and she would put on her perfume by the bathroom and then mm -hmm. she'd walk through the room and go out the door so you'd have like this little trail of perfume that just kind of fluttered through the living room and I, you know, I thought, I was like, I called my daughter, my baby girl at the time. And I was like, baby, are you putting something on? I said, no, mom, the lady is, you know? And I'm like, okay, all right. I you, know, you just ignore that the whole, the lady is part. Because yeah. I was like, no, <laughs> it's just the two of us here. There's no other person. Yeah, like, exactly. But I would notice that whenever the perfume would start up, my daughter would run and hide in her closet. And I'm just like, what is happening? You know, so I finally called my former mother-in-law over and I was just like, yo, like this is ghost in here. I don't know. I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel threatened or anything. So I just was kind of like, just leave, live and let live, you know, cause she's straight up. You're a liar. You're a straight up liar for this. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you. So she came in with her cousin and I said, now you go stand over there. That's where the ghost is going to be. And my daughter's hiding in the closet. And she was like, she smelled the perfume, which is mm -hmm. weird because it comes out of nowhere. It's just like, it's like, woo -woo, you know, and it just like, like appears. And then the old woman just walks across the room and it goes to the door and out the door. But the thing is, you only smelled the perfume in the apartment. If you went out the door, you wouldn't smell it. Mm. Oh, my Lord, child. She went and called the priest and all of this <laughs> other stuff. She's coming over here looking like dude from the exorcist with the hat and the bag and throwing water <laughs> everywhere. And I'm just like, 
man, I wish I never told you nothing. Was it the you same know? time each each day? Like I, I read, there's like they 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 do a pattern. Yeah, it's the same. It was the same time. Same it was like between okay. three and three thirty okay. every on a weekday, just on a right. weekday. Little mama had things to do, y'all. She was <laughs> like wherever she was going and whoever she was seeing, she was smelling good. But then after they came with the holy water and the Bible, and they, you know, they just kind of overdid it. And uh, she she left. It was like sad. I kind of missed her a little bit, but my daughter did not. You know, <laughs> sure she doesn't even well, remember. Was was there a history of was it an apartment or a house that you were living in? Was there a history of somebody actually dying there? I never or... asked because I was just I really didn't care. It was it was a lot of ghosts in that apartment. It was an old building. Like mm -hmm. when you put your garbage out, there was like a little, little bitty garbage door and you would have to open it in your apartment and push the garbage into the little door. Mm -hmm. And then they would come up and down the hall and open a door outside and take the yeah. garbage away. So, and then they had like one of those elevators where it had like a little <laughs> door that right. came across. So you knew the building was old. It had an oldish kind of feel. They had those old like radiators that kind of went like this. And you yeah. have to turn a knob and mm -hmm. you like anybody that came over and touched the knob, you would be pissed because it took you mm -hmm. like three and a half hours just to get it to that right <laughs> yeah. way so that the heat comes out. And then just like, oh, I'm just gonna come on, spin this. It's like, oh my god, I hate you so much. You gotta <laughs> got take a marker and mark it so you got the you know it was just like you just be like, Oh, looking like some kind of bizarre crackhead, like I gotta get it <laughs> red, red. But yeah, it was an old building in, in Pittsburgh. So I'm not sure if it's still there, but yeah, it was, it was a very old building. I'm sure because I saw like, um, once I was sleeping and when you're like in a twilight sleep, like, you know, that midway waking up, falling asleep part. Right. Yeah. There was a soldier in like a gray uniform reaching over me, trying to get my daughter, get at my daughter. Cause she slept between me and my ex-husband out of the bed. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I saw this man and I freaked out and I'm like <laughs> trying to punch because I'm smart. I'm trying to punch <laughs> ghost. I'm just <laughs> right through it. Yeah. I mean, but that's that's the natural reaction. You wake right. up someone's playing over you. You're gonna you're not gonna be like, oh, it's a ghost. I'm not gonna you swing know, at you. <laughs> the thing is, it's like don't protect the baby, punch the ghost. <laughs> my ex-husband woke up like, what what the hell? I'm like, oh, there's a ghost in here. Oh my god, okay, okay, it'll be it'll be fine, you know. But <laughs> It was like things like that while we lived there in that building. We did move out. I think we lived there for like a year or so, and then we moved mm -hmm. out. But it was always, you just always felt like like you were watched in that place. Like I would take a shower, and I would close the door, and then the door would be open like a little bit when I get out of the shower. Well, that's you just know. creepy. That Yeah, and you just <laughs> I'm like standing there like, I know I closed the door. And I know I did this, but then you kind of, when you're there by yourself, you don't really want to go through all of the steps. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, there's no one here to protect me. And there's a lot of windows and this bastard could push me out of a window. So no, it's okay. <laughs> like, I'm going to be cool with you ghosts. Don't, don't mess with me. I won't mess with you. You know, it was just a very weird Weird. I mean, like, did you walk through the apartment having conversations with this ghost at times? Like, hey, I'm if you need anything, it's like <laughs> truce, God, <laughs> truce, man, truce. But just don't bother me, okay? I'm trying to think because like, the place was just such a bizarre place. Like, like you like to use the oven, you had to light it. <laughs> it was oh, just, yeah, it was old. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, what 1920 crap is this you know and they're just like oh it had like one of those little side doors where you could just like put stuff in like pots yeah. and pans this mm -hmm. is like from the turn of the century what is what in the world like not up to code <laughs> no it's not up to not code any, not anymore no and, and we, <laughs> probably, we probably know how the woman died that, that the ghost how she died probably from that oven so I, yeah probably lighten it up i know i burnt yeah. the skin off of my uh, hair off of my arm mm -hmm. trying to light that one time it's like a, a collective of gas that just built up explosion yeah you know, blow up the whole apartment building yeah now i have no hair on my right arm so that's something for you guys to look at if you ever meet <laughs> me in person just tracy let me see your right arm i know if we ever do now we're just gonna be like hi let me let me see <laughs> what, what's your arm? 
Where Hamlet's got a question for you in the uh, the chat. Weird question: Have you ever seen or smelled the ghost of an animal or a non-human? I wouldn't be able to tell you if I could. Kind of a nasty question there. <laughs> um, I know that in Denver there were uh, dogs that were um, there was a house where the dogs would kill themselves. And when oh. I looked over at the house, it was like diagonal across the street. I got like a pain here, like right between my eyes. It was like somebody was stabbing me with an ice pick. It hurt mm -hmm. so bad that I actually had to step back from the curb and double over because I was in, just in that much pain looking over towards there. And the guy was like, yeah, the dogs used to come up here and, you know, climb this part and they would jump off. And I'm looking right where the dogs were jumping. And it just, I can't, the pain was so severe that it was just like, I just, I was like, oh, I can't even begin to describe it. Like if you take an ice cold needle and just stick it straight through your eye, that's what mm. it felt like. It's horrible. Eye horror. No. <laughs> oh, no, really. And, and it's just sad because it's dogs. <laughs> I, like I feel bad for more do for dogs than I do for humans sometimes. So it's just, just hearing that. Isn't that weird though? You like that's just a horror story. Show, to me. You'll watch a show and like all these people are dying and like no one cares, but then they kill an animal. Like everyone's all upset about the animal dying. Yeah, it's so weird. Oh, well, was it? I, I I put on Twitter. I asked anybody uh, who's watched The Last of Us on HBO before I start watching. It, I'm like, hey, any animals die? In particular, dogs. Let me know ahead of time. <laughs> you know, because I really don't don't want to watch it if, if it happens. So. Yeah. Big sensitive man. I know, but all <laughs> the people can die. All the people can die. I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah. No one cares about the people, but not the animals. Slaughter I do have a question. All, but save the so, animals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't believe in ghosts, and it's not that I don't believe other people's experiences. It's just I've never experienced it myself to believe. So with you, is it like something that like runs in your family with other people experiencing stuff, or you think it's? Just you and maybe the certain locations you're in, or what do you think it oh, is? Oh no, it, it it's in the family. My grandmother okay. on my dad's side was like clairvoyant; like she could dream things that would happen. My sister Terry dreams things that would happen. Um, I know on my mother's side it was really heavy up mm -hmm. in there uh, with the clairvoyant. It's like I have something that she said some family member of hers had. So yeah, it's been there. I mean, my grandfather or no my great grandfather per my mother married a voodoo priestess i mean you know it's like what fun <laughs> <laughs> you know like just wow you know she blessed my mother when she was pregnant with my sister and i just mm -hmm. kind of joke around and say like oh yeah that explains a lot but you know <laughs> I, it's it's just in us. I wouldn't be surprised if my sister told me, like, you know, I can feel this or whatever. Uh, uh -huh. I just never had, now that I know what it is, right. I know when I have that experience what it is. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. It's, it's so much more profound now than when I was younger because I'm thinking back to all of the places that we, we lived in a lot of different houses when we were younger, and mm -hmm. I would smell this smell like of a ghost smell, but I was not smart enough to know that that was a ghost smell. And then <clears throat> I was not smart enough to put it together, if that yeah, makes sense. Right. But now <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go back to where we lived before. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't know what was there. And there was always something in the basement. You know, it's never, the ghost would never come like, you know, into the kitchen. They always come into the basement. Into the dark the places. and <laughs> darkest part of the basement with the biggest spiders. And there's like a rat standing up smoking a cigarette <laughs> in the corner. And you're just like, oh, my God, this is where it is. You know, never, never. in like, you know, the living room. Like, yeah. hey, I'm a ghost. No. Chilling, watching TV. <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, hey, let me scooch you over. Come on, have a seat on the couch. No, it's usually in the basement when your mother's like, Oh, it's three o'clock in the morning. I forgot to tell you to take the clothes out of the dryer. Go get them. <laughs> it's like, no, thanks. Like, we'll we'll, we'll rewash them in the morning. <laughs> I'll just turn on the dryer. No, it's important. You have to go get them because your sister's diapers are in there. Or you go down there and, and the dryer's already done and everything's folded. And you're like, <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> I would spend the, the dog ghost must have been bored, you know? I would push the dog. We had a dog. And I would be like, go, go. You know, and he's looking at me. And I'm looking at him. <laughs> I mean, we have this like thing, like, no, you go. 
And I'm like, no, you go, go, you the dog, run. You know, it's like, tell me what's down there. And he just wouldn't. He was he was a jerk dog. He'd be like, no. <laughs> he would be like, you go first, and then I'll come behind you. But I will leave your ass if there's something down here. <laughs> and sure enough, he would come down the stairs and he would stay on the stairs. And I'm like, well, come on. And, you know, and it's looking at me like, sis, I don't think. <laughs> You know, I'm going back upstairs where everybody else is sleeping. And it's just like, I hate this dog. I hate this house. <laughs> I hate my life. But, is, well, is your family uh I hate it. Oh. loser? It was fun. It was fun. Oh, the ghosts are getting pissed, y'all. We better stop. <laughs> oh, okay. it was, I know, they, they hear us talking about them. I, I was just wondering, like, is, is your family like open about the experiences, or did they kind of keep it hush, and are they getting mad at you for <laughs> for telling people about it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Do I don't you care? Know. Do I care? No, not really. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, makes for good books, right? <laughs> it's, it's you know, I'm sure that uh, my mom will say something to me like Tracy. Now. But, <laughs> not the family secrets. <laughs> it's not a secret. I, I smell ghosts. What, what is there so secretive about it? It's secret because you never told me until I was <laughs> old enough to do something, you know. But in the interim, you're buying me Ouija boards with my sister going, go down in the basement, y'all. Just see what happens. Just mm -mm. see what take this out and see what happens. Like, you know, then you start getting into the game where you're like, all right, you, you're moving to planchette. No, -uh, I'm not moving it. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You know, it's, it's dull. Like we were just, <laughs> oh, it was an adventurous childhood, but we were not the brightest bulbs of the tree. I tell you that. <laughs> I wanted to get my oldest daughter a Ouija board for Christmas. My wife wouldn't let me though. So well, it's one of those things you can't ever really throw away. I know. You know, <laughs> watching like some some crap on History Channel or something, and like you try to throw the Ouija board away, and it just kept appearing in the house. And I'm just, <laughs> Really, <laughs> just burn it. Just get just get burn it out. It. Burn it. It just comes right back. <laughs> Fire cleanses all people. This is what I need to get tattooed on my body. Fire cleanses all. Yeah, burn it with some fire. You'll be fine. It's not gonna bother you again. It's not gonna come back. Fire cleanses all. Remember that forever. What with these uh these stories that your grandmother told you, how did you? What was your idea of tying root work into her stories? growing up in the parish because <sighs> that's a good one and no one's ever asked me that one you know louisiana already has this mystique to it mm -hmm. it's kind of like even though i've never been which people that read root work go you've never been because you kind of captured <laughs> it really well and i'm like nah, yeah, it is. if i go i'm not coming back and i've told <laughs> too many people that like if i go down there like you best pack up all of my stuff and send me my kids because I'm not coming back up here north. I'm not. So uh -huh. um I I just it seems to me that New Orleans, it seems like such a magical and mysterious place that yeah. when she said that she grew up in the parish, you know, and you just it just feels like this is what would happen. You know, mm -hmm. I just I couldn't even tell you what inspired me to take that route but i think it was because she grew up in the parish and there was just so many other mystical things that they would talk about you know mm -hmm. when they were younger down there happening and you know the other thing with the brother with the seventh veil and stuff you just it's just so magic it's all magic you know and these are things that happened in my family that i like to like leave a little trail behind you know leave a little legacy for the kids to look back on think we were living in hedonistic times but you know just leave a little legacy and let them see what it was like back then because you know my sister was telling me the other day she said people like to try to forget the bad things about history you know like slavery yeah. and all of this other stuff and they're like if we, if we don't talk about it it never happened and i'm like well let's talk about it. let's tell you how it is let's tell right. you how it was you know which is like in the new peewee story there's um a mention of a burned body and like you know back in those days they would burn women that were pregnant or not 
alive. Mm -hmm. They would just burn them. And they didn't care. And so you kind of you can't sweep that under the rug because that's history. Right. Yeah. So you can't like say, oh, well, this never happened. So I like to incorporate those little fine bits of history into my work so that you can say, oh, this really happened. And it gives it kind of more of a place, you know, like it gives mm -hmm. you a feeling for time and place and location and stuff like that. Speaking uh, of uh, Pee Wee, the characters in, in the book. Are, are they based on anyone in your family or people you knew or are these just straight up made up? Oh, no, scenarios? they're based on my great aunts who are just like such great, powerful women. Um, Betty was based on my great aunt Betty. Uh, I had an aunt Lois, a great aunt Lois, Lola. And oh, she was just, <laughs> she came out the hatch cursing. So, <laughs> you know. She's a little bit, a little bit of her is in Pee Wee, that little spunk, you know, a little bit of my grandma's in there. It's just a little bit of everybody that I grew up like on my mom's side that I know, you know, that I grew up with, you know, like uh -huh. a little bit of the, the spunk because it's on my mom's side. They're all so awesome and special and just great. That all of my great aunts that, you know, you have like the one aunt that likes to garden and then the right. other aunt is like, come on over. I'm going to teach you how to do these dances so you don't look stupid, you know, at the end of this, <laughs> you know, and, you know, so I would just, I just, I wanted to just, this is my love story for them. This is, you know, all the merging of all the characters for them. Is that the, I think you mentioned your aunts in the author's note and stuff, didn't you? Because it's like, oh yeah, Betty's named after Aunt Betty and all that stuff. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just there's so many of them that I can't put uh -huh. them all in there. So it's like you kind of got to blend them all together. Combine, right? combine a few into one. Yeah. You start getting family members you didn't know you had. Hey, your next book. How about, you know, a small part for me? Just a little bit, <laughs> you know. It's because there's always stories, you know, there's if you catch like some people on a different day, then they'll tell you this, a different story, you know? So it's like, I'm always sitting, I'm always listening. I'm always looking, you know, trying to find, like trying to pull these stories from my mom, pull the stories from my dad. And, you know, they're just like, Oh, you know, sometimes they'll be in a mood to talk about it. Sometimes right. they <laughs> drop that whole, I don't remember because I'm old. Like, oh, come on. You just full. You know, you know, you got something good up in there. Tell me. And, you know, just, I can't right now, baby. I have something to do. I'm watching this paint dry, really. Yeah. So fascinating. You know, or one of those, like, I'm tired of you taking the things that I tell you, Tracy, and putting them in books. I'm tired of it. But was, I was going to ask that, too. Like, how's the reaction? Are they like, getting mad at you i know you said that they're open about stuff but are you saying hey you didn't portray me this the proper no. way or anything like no, that or they're, they're excited yeah. um yeah they're excited uh it's my mom so proud and happy and i just love it uh so much to see my mom so happy because you know this is like her legacy so uh -huh. to see her like you know i'm gonna send this here and i'm gonna give this person one and this person one oh, yeah make sure everybody reads the book you know my baby <laughs> wrote a book you know i'm just like yes i feel like hercules like, hercules hercules, hercules. <laughs> God, i love that like, movie hercules hercules <laughs> Tracy wrote a book, y'all. She is not a delinquent like you thought, you know. So <laughs> become a number one seller because your mom bought a bunch of copies to send to people. Yeah, she did. A proud mama moment. Yeah. And she sends yeah. about, and you know, now I'm just waiting for her to have the quiz ready for when the second book comes out. Like, I'm not sending you a second book until you tell me who was the character on page 47 that right. did that in the first book. <laughs> right. You know, my mom will do that. She will. Memory like an elephant, just <laughs> like a trap. <laughs> yes. So were you were you already familiar with root work before you start writing the story, or was that something you had to research to incorporate it all? Because I'd never heard of it before. I've heard of hoodoo and voodoo, and that I'd never heard of root work, so I didn't know if that was something you just made up. And then after I read the book, I researched it. It's you know, it's a real I thing. Can, I am not that smart to make something like that up. <laughs> <laughs> Lay that down on the table right now. <laughs> Tracy is not that smart. Um, I did have to do some research because mm -hmm. it was like, how can I put it? It was like, 
I already knew a lot of things, okay? So then you have to do the research to find it and to make sure that you have it right. Like, you know, right. I think one day um, I was sweeping the floor and I swept across my feet and, you know, my mom's like, throw some salt off your shoulder, off your left shoulder, you know? And you, so you just want to look up these myths and legends and things just to make sure that you have them right. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much what I did. I just, that was the research that I, I did. And it was just so extensive. Um, I do have to thank my friend Jen for hooking me up with um, 5,000 pages of nothing but phonetically written hoodoo spells and such from the South during the time period that I needed because she just came through like a champ for that. Um, and my That's parents, awesome. my mom and dad, you know, cause they do tell, they, even though they kind of say, oh no, I never, I never remember doing this, but they did it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always like, I think it's hilarious. It's like, you, you got selective memory, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> did this you know you did this i would love to like read a book of of stuff like that where you, you swept your broom across your feet so you got to throw salt like all just some of the weird kind of where'd you come up with that who came up with that stuff you know it's just like turn around five times and do three jumping jacks yes 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 you stepped on a crack or something like what does it do you know what does what does it actually do and where did it come from so I think like that, that one day I would like to like have the little kid walk on a crack and then just lay down in the street and go, ah! <laughs> and they're just like, what happened? Like, you killed me. You stepped on a crack, boy. <laughs> you stepped on a crack. You know, yeah. you broke a mama's back. <laughs> I mean, nowadays, if somebody did it, you say something, they're gonna call her mom. Mom, are you okay? Are you okay, mom? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> but you know that 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 came from somewhere, some you know spell yeah, or something like or some. You know, you know, the origin stories are always so much more bigger. Yeah. Than, and then it's like it's bigger and then it just gets broken down smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So I'm mm -hmm. just, you know, some of those things are really, uh, I'm curious about. I know um, Ian Mackay from Fugazi was writing down those little sayings and he was doing a little book where he was researching like these mm -hmm. little sayings. Fugazi uh, the band? Yeah. Yeah, he's nice. Are we, are we about to have that conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Go on. <laughs> I'll just turn my power off again and not play it. <laughs> yeah. There, there's not one. No one gets alienated here. No. Yeah. There's one. What, what's the one where, like, I like if you're making a face or something and somebody smacks you on the back, it gets face stuck. Yes. Like, like, or you, it's a cross eye. Don't cross your eyes because if you get hit, don't cross your eyes. Like, <laughs> you keep making that face. Somebody's going to slap you on the back. You're going to get stuck like that. Yeah. And yeah. you just like, ugh. Do it, do it. You know? It is uh, interesting yeah. to think about where, like, where all the origins of all these little things that you know are kind of kids' games now. Like, step on the crack, break your mom's back. Like, where did that originally come from? What was the original purpose? That's really like, interesting weird. Nursery rhymes, about. like yeah, London the, um, Bridges, London Falls Bridge down. falling down and the ashes. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God! Like that's sick. That's like that's like a horror story, and it's just yeah, like it a is. kids' it's game like, now. When you look that up, you just like ashes, ashes. We all fall down. Like, oh. Yeah, and as a kid, you don't think anything of, of it. It's just something that rhymes and has a melody to it. But the reality of it's like, oh, that's dark. Girl is a little jump rope. Like, come on, girl, get yeah. in. Let's go. You know. All right, y'all. Look, I didn't promise these people like new Pee Wee story. I gotta read a little bit of the new Pee Wee story. Are, are, are you ready story? to do it? We're, we're fine if you want to hop into I'm it. Ready? Now. I got like five minutes, five solid minutes of this and i've been practicing all day <laughs> okay <laughs> so let's set it up for everybody what what the so this is after root work right so this is basically i'm gonna be writing some short short stories that take place after root work but before the second book so you mm -hmm. don't have to read this book it's i'm thinking of the title of a gathering of weapons because yeah. it's gonna be Pee Wee going around and getting all the things to put into this box or to make her spells more powerful. And <clears throat> so you don't have to read it, but if you read it and then you go and you read like the next books, it'll feel like like I'm sitting there going, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's like the insider baseball. You'll you'll have a little bit more knowledge of what's going you'll on. Have, yeah, you'll have you'll be like, oh wow, I knew this. Tracy told me, girl, you know, but you don't have to. All right, so this one is called um, Viola and the Center Man. Hold on, what? It's the Center Man hand. Oh my God. 
gosh. Okay. God. There we go. All right. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm, you're fine. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> Clear my throat. Drink a little bit of water. Prolong this. <clears throat> so let's go, people. Aunt Teddy is going to kill me. Hattie Mae half ran, half skipped down the street outside the bakery. She stripped off her ankle length skirt she wore over her dark colored pants that she cuffed above her ankle boots. The pants gave her a tall appearance, but her nickname wasn't Pee Wee because she was the youngest of her sisters. She was literally tiny with a head full of tight coiled black curls and skin the color of pecans from being in the sun all the time. She stuffed the skirt in the handmade black bag with her hoodoo potions and money. She was late getting home again. Oh, I shouldn't have been running my mouth with that chef, but those pralines were really good. She packed the bag and the soft pralines she'd wrapped in several layers of white paper. And he even gave me extra. She fixed some hairpins to her hair and tied it down with a triangular piece of black cloth. She needed to keep her hair clean for another week. The sun crawled behind the horizon as she walked down the worn path in the woods towards Aunt Teddy's house. She'd been living with Aunt Teddy since the flood the summer of 1899. Now, at age 13, Hattie Mae was a practicing conjure girl. She didn't like the term, but she loved to practice. At least Aunt Teddy called her a conjure girl. But if she could get a job, she would call herself a full-fledged practicing conjure woman. Aunt Teddy's first house was near a river. After the flood, Teddy found an even higher house that seemed as high as the surrounding trees. Hattie Mae didn't like this house as much as she liked the older house. The older house was filled with ghosts and memories of her sisters practicing that one summer that they lived with Aunt Teddy. Hattie Mae liked to sneak down to the dock and take the small boat out fishing in the summer and the fall. Once, she and her sister Patricia Ann ventured out and caught some crawdads at night. This new house, though, this new house was further inland, away from the water, but always close to the cemetery where Teddy reinforced in Hattie Mae's mind that she wanted to be buried. Are you listening to me, Hattie Mae? Teddy yelled at her one day while Hattie worked hard at kneading bread dough in a huge yellow bowl. <sighs> Aunt Teddy. You ain't got to say it but once. I know Hattie Mae snapped. Besides, you know I prefer Pee Wee on account of Hattie Mae is my business name. I calls you Hattie Mae when I'm serious about something. And if I call you Pee Wee, you ain't gonna listen none. Aunt Teddy walked over and took the bowl from her. The bread dough had been kneaded and punched down so many times in her anger that Pee Wee was sure that she ruined the entire loaf. Now, she scurried down the path because the smell of rain was in the air. Beneath that was a smell she knew well, the smell of fear. Pee-wee stopped and looked around the woods. She looked up at the darkening sky and heard the sound of wings swooping through the air. Frogs croaked nearby as she wiped at the sweat that was building up on her brow. Beads of salty sweat shimmied down between her shoulder blades as she pressed forward. The more she moved, the more her shirt and cuffed pants felt sticky from the humidity. In the distance, she saw something beckoning to her. Whatever it was, it danced around in the air, something yellowish and red with a mind of its own. Heavy smoke rose and swirled around it. Soon the smoke was on top of her filling her lungs and making her cough. She pulled her bag up to cover her mouth as she stumbled backwards and off the path. This was no ordinary fire. It seemed to emanate heat from quite a distance away. Pee Wee poured some powder from her purple bag into one hand and grabbed a small bottle of moonshine from her bag with the other. She took a sip of the moonshine and blew the powder in the distance. Open my eyes and show me the truth she said before she blew the powder. She closed her eyes and did it again. Open my eyes and show me the truth, she said, stronger this time, and steadied her feet on the ground. 
Even though the fire was there, the smoke wasn't as strong. She heard the voices whisper on the wind that surrounded her. She stopped and pressed a hand to a black tree trunk that seemed to have been burned before. Closing her eyes, she asked the tree for guidance in helping in help telling her what had happened. She inhaled slow and easy, just like Teddy's boyfriend, Lone Wolf, taught her. Open up to me and tell me your story, she whispered as her fingernails scraped at the black burned bark. The longer she touched the tree, the more she seemed to feel until something motioned for her to look up. She looked up into the spindly dead branches and saw something wrapped in a rope and smoking. It was a body. She stumbled backwards and fell onto the ground before apologizing to the tree. She pulled a small dagger from the right side of her boot and pushed back into some bushes behind her. As she felt her way through the dark, something warm and small shook beneath her hand. Her heart pounded in her chest. She felt her body tense as she slowly turned to see what it was. When she faced it, a hand slapped over her mouth, silencing a scream that tried to escape. They gonna get you too if you don't stay quiet. That's it. How dare you leave it at that? A tease. What a, t- what a tease. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, that's good. I love it. So how, how much older is Pee Wee in this one now? Than the- She's 13. So she was what, like she was what four, nine or ten and nine or ten in the first one. She was like ten and a half. Remember, she ten, ten that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Ten and a half. Yeah. So ten is she half. becoming is she becoming more of a master of her powers as as we go along? In this one, yeah, she okay. is becoming stronger and she is learning more because okay. she in the first one she didn't have those powers that Lone right. Wolf told her about so now we have mm-hmm. we're integrating lone wolf we're getting some more you know with her blowing the powder with the moonshine you know she's learning yeah. and this is going to be great because great things are going to happen here I, I would like to share more with you guys but all i'm allowed to say is stay tuned to dark heart there you more. go <laughs> well okay so so tell me just one thing because because one thing i really liked about root work was the different points of view, how some chapters were broken up with all the different points of view. It it just had a smoother feel to it and it kind of broke things up. Are you going to continue to do that style of writing? Well, you know, some chapters through the eyes of certain people or. When I do the proper sequel to root work. Yes. I've already started on it. So we have um, Patricia Ann, we have her perspective starting to book off. And then we have her calling Pee Wee, and then we have Pee Wee's perspective. So yeah, because I think that's the that's the really great way to kind of get inside all the characters' heads, right? Yeah, and kind of can see like what they're thinking as opposed to the all present, uh, you know, third narrator that it's just like that knows everything. But I think uh-huh. when you have like the little bits of uh, information from each character, it just makes it. So you kind of feel more endeared to that character. If you like Patricia Ann, then you like what she's doing and you're seeing all the stuff that's happening through her perspective. Like in root work, you saw how Pee Wee was affected by what happened to her father. And then you saw Mm -hmm. how Betty was affected and then how Ann was affected. So each person got to show that. So that's what I I will definitely keep using that because I do like that. Yeah. You you don't see it a lot of times. You see a lot whether it's all first or all third, you know, I like the whole mix up and I, I know it's not the easiest thing to do and get away with. So that's, that's pretty cool. Hey Jay, yeah, you I, should read some George R. R. Martin because each of his <laughs> chapters is from a different person's perspective. <laughs> Probably each book, right? I mean, 7,000 pages. And we're just now getting to the lost city. I don't know anything about what he. <laughs> no, but you did a great job though with like each individual person's perspective, like whether it was Pee Wee or Betty or, you know, Aunt Teddy, each person felt like a their own individual. It didn't feel like the same person. Just, you know, you slapped a different name on the top of the chapter. Like, each person felt different and unique, which I really... And I think I told you earlier, but Pee-wee's, Pee-wee was my favorite. I like Pee-wee a lot. Do you know who complimented me on that that whole genre thing? F. Who? Paul Wilson. Did he? <laughs> really? He was like, Tracy, you did it. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> kill me now! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good compliment to get from him. 
Yes, it is. And the fact that he remembered me at StokerCon, I was just like, bro. But I mean, <laughs> like crazy black girls, busy dough, you know, really. <laughs> Wait, like, did you grab your phone and tell him to re-say it like you did your <laughs> recording? <I have> so <laughs> many hey, can you repeat that, please? <laughs> yeah, I have so many pictures with him and he blurred brute work. It's in the front of it. He was one of yeah, the first I... people I asked. And I was just like, yo. And he signed it, F. Paul Wilson, author of The Keep, you know, because that was like, <laughs> Oh my God, is that Paul Wilson out there to And he's just like, this, this one, this one. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm just, but I was just like, so excited, so excited. It's nice when you get to meet like all of your, you know, horror heroes that you read yeah. growing up, like him and um, Douglas Winter, who did Primeval. Uh -huh. um, I just I couldn't even like contain myself. I just, oh, so excited. And it's even better when you get to meet them and they're actually cool, nice, down to earth people too. It makes it and even better. All liked the drink and i don't <laughs> and they would tease me because they're like it's only 11 and you're going to bed and i'm like and you guys are going out <laughs> yeah <laughs> like so, no. <laughs> so speaking of which the, are these who you read growing up to get you into the whole writing uh world or does something crazy happen to you you, you watched your first horror movie at an early age to get you into like writing or what well, what I'm happened there you, like uh <clears throat> My parents will probably never admit it, but my mom like took us to see Alien when we were little because nice. she didn't want to go by herself. So <laughs> we, like, That's a good reason. The, the thing bursting from the chest and going across the table. And at first I was scared, but then I was like, holy crap. Look at this. <laughs> like this is awesome. And my yeah. cousins would take me to see like Friday the 13th, those mm -hmm. movies, you know. Um but it all started with Richard Matheson, believe it or not. I read I Am Legend because I had heard about it. Yeah, yeah. No, I had watched Twilight Zone. And I noticed that Charles Beaumont, Richard Matheson, and um, William Shatner, all, when they were, when you had those three, you knew that was going to be an episode. Yeah. Like, oh, uh -huh. yes, this is it. You know, Charles Beaumont wrote it. This is an episode, you know, or like you see William Shatner and Richard Matheson. Oh, this is it. This is the jam. So then I was like, how can I find out more about this Richard Matheson character? Right. So I mm -hmm. went down, I found I Am Legend. I read a first edition at Cleveland Public Library, which I have to shout out to my cousin, Roderick Jones, for letting me read that in the back. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't walk away with it. You stand here and you read it. So I'm like, okay. And then it was like, from there, it just opened to... Um, Charles Beaumont, I read a lot of his stuff. And then Richard Matheson had a son and I read his stuff. And it was like, because there was not a lot of horror when I was little. And there was even less horror with black people in it. Right. Uh -huh. So, you know, you just like, like, I don't even see where I'm represented here. Now, you know, I hope to inspire some other person, you know, like I could read like Indian horror, or Native American horror, you know, all yeah. of these different types of things now. That is great, but you have to imagine being me growing up and you're not seeing yourself represented. And you're just like, well, uh -huh. I'm just going to have to represent my damn self. <laughs> there you and, go. You no, know, I just, I was like, let me start doing this for me. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I know that we watched a lot of scary movies. And then my dad turned me on to like Mr. Sardonicus. And then my mom was telling me about the original invasion of the body snatchers that she mm. watched when she was younger. And I was like, let me, let me watch these movies. The, the original from what, like 56 or something? Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yes. But they took us to see the 1978 version at the drive-in. Yeah. And I oh, will never cool. forget that dog with the man face. And I was like, <laughs> this shit is traumatizing. <laughs> I just knew it. I was like seven. And I'm looking like, this is not good. And like for a year... Whenever I would go out walking and I'd see a dog, I would just be so hyper. Like, it's like, <gasps> <laughs> it's here. Or like, you know, like if like you touch a plant and then like there's like a little like plant snot on your hand and you just a little like. residue, oh, yeah. This is it. I'm done. Yeah. This is, this is <laughs> they got me. They got me, mom. You know, I'm sure my mom's used to that. I think, I think I was three when I saw Friday the 13th, the first, first one. And I just remember the, the the head being cut off. Seeing that when you're three, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, the, uh, the mom's head cut off. Spoilers yeah. for anybody who hadn't seen that by now. And Kevin Bacon was in the first one. 
was yeah. the first. He was the first. Yeah, I, yeah. I get the first one second mixed up a little bit, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Tony, like these really popular actors like Kevin Bacon, like Johnny Depp was in <laughs> the first Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Yeah, but it helps if you go like old school, like Kevin Bacon. Like nobody knew that. Everybody knew Johnny Depp was in there. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. But you know, you gotta find like like Jennifer Aniston was in Leprechaun. <laughs> that movie's that movie's so so bad. The, the entire <laughs> series is awful. yeah. It's sometimes like I, I I don't know. Close to Friday the Thirteenth when there, like a real one occurs, it's like sci fi is having a Leprechaun marathon. Like how many did you make? Really? There's like <laughs> eight or nine or ten of them. They're all. I feel like each one gets worse and worse. They're all bad. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. And they're so it's bad. They're laughing. Like Chucky to come in and like you know uh, just killing yeah, them that, all. Something. Instead of like Freddy versus Jason, they need Chucky versus Leprechaun. <laughs> so you know, both like, the same you height. Know, like, like stuff like Video Drone, which oh, yeah. I my sister watched, and then she told me about it. And the way she said it was Tracy, their heads going into the TV, and I'm like, what? <laughs> And she's like, they're going into the TV and are coming out of the TV. And I'm just like, why does she watch this? Like, <laughs> what? Like, she watched scanners and stuff like that with like the guy that's vibrating. You know, I wasn't really like a super duper horror film junkie, but she was. Like, she uh-huh. watched um, Dreamscape. And because she would get so hyped watching it, and talk about like she would talk about Dreamscape, like, you know, I can I can project myself into your dream, you know, and we like <laughs> Slept in rooms down the hall from each other. And she's like, Did you see me? Did you see me last night? <laughs> what are you talking about? Did you see me in a dream? I was there. You know, and I'm like, no, you weren't. There. <laughs> like it was because she would get so into it that I'm yeah. like, Well, I, I need to watch it because obviously I'm missing something. Right. You know, <laughs> it was I like know. contagious. She was contagious, yeah. like rubbing it off on you, making you want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, well, I have to watch this. I I did watch video drone and that gave me a headache but then like david cronenberg <laughs> movies you just like you have to you have to go in knowing it's going to be weird i think you, you just job. want to hug the man and go like yeah. come <laughs> on man you, somebody needs to love you because <laughs> what is wrong <laughs> with you like what is seriously like he was a night breed with this with the mask with the little buttons right yeah don't you guys remember yeah i do yeah no you don't no, Night it's always it's always on. I think Shutter's showing it right now or uh, Tubi. Yeah. You can always find that stuff on Tubi. Yeah, and you just I'm like, this is David Cronenberg in a movie being his <laughs> freaky weird self. Like what? Oh wow! It just I don't know. It just blows me away. It just blows me away. What yeah. um, what genre would you, would you call root work though? Because I don't think it's it, it was like horror. I didn't I didn't look at it as really horror. I mean, I trying to like figure Southern Gothic kind of in a way. Yeah. That's what somebody said. They said, you know, it's like the reclamation of Southern Gothic. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. By African Americans. That's what they were enti- putting it under as a category. And I'm like, well, okay, that'll work. Someone said historical fiction. Yeah. Yeah, um, I can see that. Which I could see that. But I was just like, hmm. I just like my own category. I'm just Tracy. How about that? It's a Tracy, Tracy, it's a Tracy genre. category. Yeah, Tracy category. You know, <laughs> the Cleveland girl thing. So well, let, let's see how good you are with these. Uh, are we doing the the horror do some, trivia? You want to do that? Just just general movie trivia. I just general. Okay. I, Russell I we Russell's ready. got a question real quick. Were you into the horror movies before horror books? Yes, because back then there were no horror books. <laughs> Oh, that's way sure. back, way back in my day, <laughs> way back in the yonder, when we'd have like beefosaurus burgers and shit, there was like no horror. <laughs> it was just Fred Flintstone and me. Back, back where we lived in black and white, the it yes. was like what we yes. saw on old videos was real. Yeah, with I was, I was, yeah. between the channels, you had to stick uh-huh. it in to keep the channel <laughs> from turning. Yeah, that's how I lived. <laughs> but yeah, there were the only thing they had was comic books. So I would yeah. read my dad's old comic books. And they were like, you know, all's fair in love and war, or like the Avengers, or Iron Man, or Batman, you know. And then that was like as dark as it got. And then uh-huh. finally, Walden Books came out with Prime Evil, and you're just like, oh my god, what is this? <laughs> oh, this is a collection of horror. What? And it was like several Prime Evil uh, episodes, like books, you know. And then yeah. I'd save up all my little pennies and run up to Walden Books and buy it. So yeah. 
there, there wasn't a lot of horror there. And even if it was, we died first. It was always like, <laughs> black, black guy, he's dead. <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, that's why in all of my books, the black people live. <laughs> we live. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith Tracy. <laughs> There is you're talking about the representation and not seeing yourself in the movies. There is something I want to mention on uh, Twitter the other day. Author S. A. Cosby. He was talking about he went to like a middle school and was talking to an eighth grade class or something like that. And when it was over, a little um, African American boy came up to him. It was kind of shy, and he said that he didn't know that there were black authors because he wanted to be a writer himself, but he didn't know that there yeah. were black authors. And it just like made this kid's day. It was such like the sweetest tweet. It was it was so good. I I love. Yeah, I like, would love that because this is the future. And if you uh -huh. see somebody doing it, you know, like I tell anyone that gets discouraged, there's somebody out there waiting for you to write your book. Yeah. There's somebody out there that's like, yo, this is going to be my jam. So don't ever give up on yourself. Don't ever say, I'll never get it done. I won't get it. Write the book. There will mm -hmm. always be somebody that's there that's like, waiting to read it and it's going to inspire somebody and then you'll be a hero to somebody else right. they'll pick yeah. it up and they'll be a hero to somebody else so just write the book you know just tracy's little posits of positivity thank you <laughs> i mean or, it was, or take that snippet out and make a little promo from that little, little promo <laughs> was so because that little boy's like he's he didn't know there were other authors there were authors like him and he wanted to be a writer but he didn't think anybody would read it because he never seen anybody like him before to it and that just made S.A. cosby day that but I used to get such a cool like, tweet. Um, I used to get the, oh, you look normal. <laughs> and <I'm> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you're a black horror author. You you just look like a regular person. Like, oh yeah, because with the whole gothic and the, the right, the, yeah. you get under the moon. We only do that like on the third Sunday of the month. <laughs> but outside of that, it's a regular mom, you know. So that's about it. But yeah, a lot of people. It was like, uh, for a while, it was almost like it was a novelty. Like, they're just like, so wait, 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 just, you're black, mm -hmm, and you write <laughs> horror. Yeah. Hmm. Living in this day and age. Okay. <laughs> They've never but, heard of Rap James White. You know, never heard yeah, of him before. And I'm just like, black people do write books, y'all. Come on. They do. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, it was just like that whole, like, nouveau thing. And I have a picture on my Instagram, where it's all the black horror writers at the HWA, the Horror Writers Association, got together, and I said, "Here we are." Yeah. Well, that's, here we are. There's like, <laughs> like a million of us. We all write it. There's all, so many different types of horror within just that. Oh one yeah, year, yeah. You know, so it's just like, please hire us. Call. Now, that, horror's got a big umbrella. That so many things are underneath. There's it, so, so much. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like more now than there ever was before which is you could find your jam on anything now like i said i enjoy reading horror of other cultures like i enjoy mm -hmm. love death and robots on netflix i because that's some stuff that i would have never been exposed to ever yeah you know, and i love all of it i'm i'm here for everything yeah. that's why i feel too like if you're just reading the same perspectives of characters and books it gets boring and stale like it's gonna be the same thing mm -hmm. kind of over and over but if you read root work or the only good Indians or, you know, whatever else get pr different perspe perspectives from other people. It just enriches you as a person too. And I, I appreciate all that. Yeah, definitely. So you okay, want to do some trivia? trivia you do some movie, some movie trivia. All right, let's see. And this is just general movie trivia. So let's see here. That was, right. that was our budget. That was our budget. That was so we spent cute. spent all one dollar on that night. <laughs> yeah, so we try to class it up some, Tracy. Try to on. class it up some. I like it. I like it. That little all film right. projector, and whatnot. All right, we'll start off with a uh, fairly easy one. Uh oh. Well, maybe not because you don't like fantasy, so this might not be easy. Where were the Lord of the Rings movies filmed? And it's multiple choice: Ireland, Iceland, New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Correct. And Jay, if she doesn't get it right, we'll let Jay guess too. I didn't know it. <laughs> I haven't watched them. <laughs> I couldn't uh, with, see the eye. The Sauron. I could the never Sauron see the eye. I was just like, what's that burning vagina? 
<laughs> Someone's got the crabs. <laughs> All right. Uh, which country does Forrest Gump travel to as part of the as part of the All American Ping Pong Team? Does he go to Vietnam, China, Sweden, or France? Say the question again. Which country does Forrest Gump travel to as part of the All American Ping Pong Team? Was it Vietnam, the, China, Sweden, or France? I want to say China. China's right. Oh, she's two for two, Jay. I would. I would have. Probably tried China myself, but yeah. this is a super easy one. Freddy Krueger wears a striped sweater, which is what colors? Red and green. Red and green. Yeah. Christmas all year for him. <laughs> I think the hand has four claws. Yeah, I think it does. Four, yeah. What is the name of the fictional land where Frozen takes place? Oh my dear God! Where's my child? Where's my <laughs> you, mean, child? you may give you may give you multiple choice. <laughs> where's my child? Oh, is it Naples, Florin, Arendelle, or Grimm? Yeah. Arendelle. Yeah. <laughs> Arendelle. I feel like that's seared into my memory, and I'll never be able to forget yeah. how much. I, I have, I have a movie. I have a thirteen-year-old and nine-year-old, and I mean, I've probably seen that movie more than any other movie I've, I've ever seen in my whole life. Yes, so. I know all the songs <laughs> and all the words. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, I've got a five year old daughter, and so she watches it a lot. And now my two year old son, he'll be like Elsa. He gets super pumped for Elsa. I'm like, great, <laughs> great, more more Elsa. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Is it true or false? Sean Connery wore a toupee in every James Bond movie. True. True. That seems weird because that looked like his real hair. They look like a toupee. Fine. It doesn't even matter. He was just delicious. <laughs> I don't even care. He was uh, yummy. This that is not is a question, but who's your who's your favorite Bond? Connery, baby. Connery. Yes. Jay, what about you, Jay? Who's your favorite Bond? It's got to be you. Got to be Connery. I mean, it's got to go with the original. I mean, I like I like some of the other ones. There were a couple, one or two I didn't care for. There's like one guy that did like one movie. Lazenby. Yeah, that's that's the. Uh, he was actually the first Bond. He did. Uh, uh, Diamonds are forever. I think it was, but I mean, you got you have to go. I mean, Connery's known for it, so I like Roger Moore a lot. His movies were goofy, like uh, oh, the space one and all that. I liked his movies, but with uh, Jaws, the guy with the metal teeth. Yeah, but you know, Roger Moore's Bonds were kind of like like bow wow, bow wow. They just had um, that kind of thing going to them. Who, who was the last one? Daniel Craig. I, I, think they, I, yeah, like I, his. I, I think they changed the whole bond feel with his because it, it was more blow up action with his stuff as yeah. opposed to some of the suspense mystery thriller of, of some of the older ones you know with craig i liked every other movie like his first one was good the third one was good the fifth one was good but i didn't like the middle ones daniel craig was just a hard guy he was a hard looking man so you just mm -hmm. He, he just knew he was gonna just hit you like a little <laughs> brick or something. Like just, they were, ow. they had. They the were like a, they were like the board movies. Is what I felt like they were trying to do with those, like the Jason yeah. Bourne movies. I mean, it, it changed the whole feel for the whole Bond series. I, I think with with his stuff, it was like we have yeah, a bigger well, budget know, now. You had like the flirting with Money Penny. You know, he's just like, well, yeah, so uh -huh. yeah. you know, and like if Daniel Craig walks in and he's flirting with you, you're like, oh my god, are you gonna anal rape me? Like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> like please don't, no. <laughs> like, that's how I felt. I was just yeah, like, it was just, it, I just felt yeah, I felt they were more over the top instead of more. <laughs> <laughs> just like, ah, oh, that's sexy. Oh, 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 oh no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, back on track. Woosa, concentrate. <laughs> who directed? Who directed the hit 2017 movie Get Out? Oh, Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. Yes. If you, yeah. If you watch the Marvel movies in chronological order, which movie would you watch first? Would it be Iron Man, oh, Captain Iron America, the First Avenger, oh, Doctor Strange, or Captain Marvel? If I'm watching it in order, not oh. not order of which they came out, but like chronological order, like timeline wise. Okay, so then you start with the Cap, Captain yeah. America, Captain America, First Avenger. Yeah, but then you kind of it depends. I mean, yeah, you watch Cap, but then 
you could also watch Iron Man first because he kind of set it off. Because Cap was still under ice when Iron Man was like doing his thing, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Jason wasn't there like, was there like a East, Easter egg or something at the end? Was that Iron Man? Comes out and they try to redo the flip, the baseball game. Yeah. And he was like, no, no, this is wrong. I was at that baseball game. And then Nick Fury walks out and he's just like, bro, calm down. You know. <laughs> Which I was kind of wondering, like, what did Cap think? Like, if you saw Nick Fury coming out, like, this big <laughs> black man coming at me, what the hell? You know, like, this, times have changed. Times have definitely changed. I don't know for him because he was, what, frozen to the end of World, World War II or something like that? Till what? Yeah, went under the, the ice. 2020s or whatever? Red yeah. Skull and all of that. Oh, Hugo Weaving, your forehead is phenomenal. <laughs> All right, which movie is this quote from? Here's looking at you, kid. Is it from it's Breakfast Casablanca. at Tiffany's? Casablanca. She doesn't even need the multiple choice. She's yeah. doing it. All right, this is a weird one. Some of the Velociraptor noises in Jurassic Park are actually which animals mating? Wait, say so again. Them. So some of the Velociraptor noises in Jurassic Park are actually which animals mating? So animals were having sex, and they use those noises for the raptors in Jurassic Park. I'll give you multiple choice if you want it. Was it crocodiles, lizards, frogs, or tortoises? Frogs? Jay, you want to guess? Well, so it's not frogs? I was going to go it's with not, frogs. It's not frogs. <laughs> Which uh, animals lizards? having sex sound like a dinosaur? Tortoises, lizards, or crocodiles? Crocodiles. The crocodiles. crocodiles. It's tortoises. <laughs> <laughs> That's in my head now. I don't know why. I it. thought they would Just be quiet. Make... Yeah. <laughs> they they have I mean, to be aggressive. The, the sounds are a little bit too fast for <laughs> <laughs> maybe they, that's the only time they move fast is when they're when they're having this... hour and a half of the show. We're talking about tortoises doing it. Tortoise sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do we'll do two more. Let's see. Which Ask actor has about aliens? Ask me something about aliens. Let's see. Let's see if there's an aliens one on here. Or not? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Wait, you ever notice that for a time that like there was always two people from an aliens movie in another movie together? Well, like, I'm looking at Near Dark. Okay, and then you had um, Terminators. Okay, Michael mm-hmm. Bannon, um, Bishop. You know, just just randomness. <laughs> that is kind of. <laughs> I didn't Think go that deep it. with it. <laughs> yeah. Bill Paxton right. ad-libbed all of his lines. <laughs> all right, you want some, some aliens trivia? Here we go. How many years was Ripley adrift? It's 22? It says 57. 57 years. Oh, because her daughter was old when she came back. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me another one. What year was Aliens released, the original one? Aliens? Aliens with an S. Was it 88? 86. Shit, that was close. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what is written on Fierro's helmet? Whose helmet? Fierro, the drop uh, ship pilot. Oh, fly me friendly. Yeah, fly the friendly skies. Who's fly me friendly? You can, you can, you can only see so fly me friendly. <laughs> you can only see. Let's see. We'll do we'll do one more. Let's find a good one. Aliens Day is April 26th. Have you read um V Castro's book Vasquez yet? No. <laughs> Where you put her in spot, Brad? Just asking. It's new. It still came out recently. Well, she wrote she wrote about Vasquez being in a juvie. I did talk to V Castro about that. Did you? Yeah, I was like, yo, like, for real, did you, like, add her boy up in there? Because, you know, he grew up in the hood, too. And she was like, well, I'm going to refer to that, Tracy. Like, she just, <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, you little smart ass. <laughs> She's nice, though. I love her because we like Poppy's Bright. But I was just like, well, don't forget to add her boy because they did grow up together. Yeah, because, uh, like, the last half of the book's about her kids or something, I think. 
Which I mean, come on, Vasquez have kids? <laughs> How do you think about it? Would you hit that? Really? Maybe <laughs> maybe the other person didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what it Vasquez was. just grabbed him and held him down. Stick it up in there. <laughs> just like, okay, all right then. We're we're talking about Vasquez, so we'll end on this one. What is written on the side of Vasquez's weapon? It's written on the side. I don't know. Wait, via con deals or something? Mm -mm. Just it's one word. Adios. Adios is what she has written on the side of her weapon. Yeah, adios. I thought you were going to ask me what she had written on the front of her thing because I'm like I have no clue what that says. (laughs) (laughs) I have no clue. I'll go. I don't know. <laughs> Is that your which one's your favorite aliens movie? You know, it was Aliens with the S because I'm gonna tell you something. I saw that movie like seven times, eight times, and then my mm-hmm. aunt pulls me aside and she goes, "You know, there's music," and I'm like, "What?" And she's like, there's music in the movie. I'm like, no, I haven't heard any music. That's how hardcore I was watching that movie that I didn't hear. Zoned in. And then when you hear it, you're just like, oh, my God, someone turn it off. It's too loud. You know, (laughs) I I had no clue. I just love that. Yeah. Did you want to? You know what? I will tell you guys. So here, I've. I'm going to drop this because I haven't said this in public, public to real Ooh. people yet. But um, so they were talking about like, how do we do this new James Bond movie and how do we get this? So, you know, like in Thunderball, okay, they had mm-hmm. a meeting of all the double O's. Of course, James was late, which was Sean Connor. He came in late. <laughs> but what you do is you have a meeting. Okay. You have, you go back to the Thunderball. With, with the table, with the chairs, because he was out there flirting with money penny, and they were like, oh, is that right? Did you join us? Because there was a woman, and there was a black person in there. I remember that, definitely. So what you do is you have that meeting with all the double O's, okay? Then you have like a double O go out with double O seven. And then double O seven gets killed. And then the other double O takes over. And now you mm-hmm. got a whole new franchise without having to like really do a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, because you don't have to call it James Bond. You can call it 006 or whatever. Exactly. 004, Ooh. play Tracy for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was always my thought. They were they were like, no, we're going to go, th- we're going to do this. Because I did not like the Daniel Craig where he went off and married, uh, what's her name, Eva Green and the beginning of that, uh, the end of that other James Bond. Oh, oh yeah, Mary? Yeah, I was like, Bond would I, never I, said, I haven't watched all the Daniel Craig ones. So I didn't that was in a... Uh, <laughs> Keep it that, that was, way. Yeah. That yeah, was the Bond first one, wasn't never, it? Like, he would never be like, oh my God, the pussy's so good. You know, I got to stop doing <laughs> James Bond stuff. You No. Know, no. This is Bond we're talking. Okay. He, he, mm, no. That, that made me so angry. I was in the theater and I was really ready to ask for my money back. I'm like, this, this is a pussy Bond. What is this? No. <laughs> and then like she dies and then he's like, revenge. I'm like, Bond ain't never went after nobody for killing no woman. Come on. That was the one where she drowned, right? But then the whole house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. And she's just like, let me go. Go, Bond. And he's, no, no. Oh, <laughs> God. Come on. Bring me so an I, Ewok or something. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you this because it kind of relates to Bond. What your thoughts are? Were they going back and like um, editing all these old people's works because they're doing the Bond books and they're doing. Uh, the guy who wrote all the kids stuff, like the witch's books. I can't think of his name right off the top Roald of my head. Doll. What's his name? Roll Doll. Yeah. 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 Do, 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 do you, book two? They're, they're supposed to be editing the Don, the Bond books to make them more. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think because, about that? Um, Money Penny was allegedly. I'm uh, not Money Penny. Pussy Galore was a lesbian, and then they were saying some shit like Bond tried to rape her in the in the barn or something. I think it's not necessary because you know what? They're shoving all of this this right down our throat so much that it's like when do we actually get to enjoy something for what it's worth i mean if you're gonna do this then Mm -hmm. here's what you do you go back into all of stephen king's books okay and you take out every n-word every magical negro trope in his books and Mm -hmm. i will start reading them again but that's not gonna happen you know because then you have like pamphlets 
but neither right. here nor there. But I really think that it's like becoming so much overdone to the mm -hmm. point where you just scared to say anything anywhere, you know, in yeah. public. Like I say, my pronouns are she, her, and mom. I don't want to walk up to you and have to ask you what your pronouns are because you just introduce yourself. Hi, I am Bob. This is what you can call me. Then I will forever call you Bob. You know, yeah. I will forever refer to you as such. But this is just, I think, don't touch my shit. That's what I'm going to say right now. Don't, mm -hmm. don't. Don't try and go in and, and re-edit root work and add this and make it more PC because you're going to come to a point where these kids are going to be so sick and tired of that, that it's either going to burst and backfire so profoundly on everyone where it's just like, or it's just, gonna, it's like going to be either that or it's just going to be so militant that it's just, there's no imagination to it. You're taking yeah. all the fun out of everything. I mean, I wonder what how like how do I'm they not pick a big Ro doll doll I'm, fan, you right. know. But I just I'm like leave it alone, you know. Mm -hmm. It just leave it alone. It didn't. I mean, was there a complaint at some point on James Bond books and Ro doll books? Because there's like like you said, there's like thousands of other books. If they're going to do it for those, there's yeah. going to be other ones that would probably, are probably worse that need to be. Yeah. Change. And I don't. How did those two come up? After doll in England, I do know that for a fact. But it's just like stop, y'all. Come on, because even if you change it, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. So now, what are you going exactly. to do? You're gonna go back and you're going to go say, well, let's take all of like like in Florida, let's take all of the black fraternities and sororities off campus now. You know, let's take all this black power and shit out of the books now. Just because you take it out doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It was mm -hmm. there. It's always been there. Just leave it the hell alone. If you are offended by it, move on and go take change lanes and do something else. But don't go and try and change it because we're living in what is called a woke time now. Oh. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. There's so many other things that you could be doing instead of focusing on this one thing. Says R.L. Stein's publisher has censored some of his books. I didn't know that. I'm done. What is has he wrote? What? The, I don't even understand like, why. Hmm. What is the benefit of this? Because if like, like I bought R.L. Stein, like I bought Goosebumps books for my daughter. Mm -hmm. So then you go back and you change it to make it like gender neutral or whatever. I mean, okay, I have a son. He played with Barbies. Was I like, oh, you can't play with Barbies because that's a girl toy? He just wanted to play with a doll. He just did, 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 did. you know, I didn't make yeah. a big deal out of it. You don't make a big deal out of it, and it won't be a big deal. But I think that all of this is just taking it too far. My own personal opinion. Please don't touch my stuff. <laughs> like if you <laughs> like you're talking it, about, do it for you're talking about earlier, like the the like history erasure. Like that's my erase opinion. all the I'm all the bad stuff that happened. Me. Like if you erase all the bad stuff that happened, like we're eventually going to forget about it, and then history is going to repeat itself, and the same stuff's going to happen that happened however many long however long ago that you know you were trying to erase in the first place. Yeah, I mean, think about how you're going to describe now to like someone that wasn't born now, like forty mm -hmm. years from now. Yeah. Well, what what mm -hmm. generations out is it? What's the newest? Is it Generation Z or something like that? There is. They're going to be idea. the most protected generation and when they're finally out of school or whatever in the real world and they're going to encounter something it's going to they're blow not, their mind yeah they're you know? not going to know how to deal with it like what i don't understand this you know yeah. and it's just like just stop just let it because i always think that i say okay if we go change all of this stuff how would i describe this to a child that is born now that turns like 40 Mm -hmm. Like, how would you describe what is happening now with the Me Too and all of this and everything? How would you explain that? Like, what was the trigger for all of this? You know, it's just, just leave it alone. Because once you start censoring one thing, then you're going to start censoring something else. And what, I think it was, um, gosh, I can't think of his name. But he said, you know, you were silent when it came for everybody else, you know, and then they're going to come for you and nobody's going to say nothing for you. So just uh -huh. leave it alone. Leave it. It's history. Leave it alone. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, I'm, so, I'm so done. But like I'm right so over 
50. So uh-huh. that makes a difference because I grew up, if you look at how I grew up, you'd be like, this child was a hedonist, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the seventies, <laughs> the eighties, what, yeah. you know, like I see eighties with the sat- satanic panic. I mean, Hey, yeah, you know, that was you- a good time for some of us. <laughs> some of my girlfriends had like mohawks and shit, you know, and like and when they were little. And I'm just yeah. like, you look back and all oh, that was so hardcore. But then you look back now, you just, I don't know. I would say like the kids are not, somebody dared me the other day. I dare you to go for a week without internet, TV, or what. I'm like, bro, how much money you got? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I like there was a video and this. These kids or three kids were standing outside and they didn't know how to play. You could tell the mom was like, go outside and <laughs> play. And they're just like standing outside and just like kicking in the air, kicking on the grass. And it's, it's sad too. You, you take away their cell phone for like 10 minutes, they're like lost. It's yeah, like, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, they don't get it. Man, like, I, I, I tried to explain to my, my oldest one time. I was like, we had a set of encyclopedias. She's like, well, what's that? Yes. We had a set yes. of encyclopedias. I remember in 1984 when we bought it, you know, it was, you were considered kind of rich if you had a whole set. Because they were expensive. Miss, you weren't missing like a certain letter. And I was like, and if I had to do a research paper for school, I went to that letter and I looked it up and I just took what was in there. There was no yes. Google this or Google that. It's like. That was that was your Google. That was it. Yeah. You, but, you- but. You know, kids these days they refer to the eighty seventies and eighties and nineties as the late nineteen hundreds. So I just cringe. <laughs> like my my thirteen year old comes home and she's like, "Yeah, we were learning about the late nineteen hundreds." Like what? The what? Nineteen ninety six. There was a there was a video on TikTok I saw the other day. Why would you do that? <laughs> there was a video I saw on TikTok and the girl was I don't know she's probably an eighteen young, late or early twenties or something. So like, you know, it would be really cool if you had, you know, a phone in your house and it only stayed in your house. You know, you didn't take it anywhere. And like a guy reacted to, it, he's like, "It's talking about a home phone, a landline." She's talking about a landline. He's like, "How old am I?" Yeah. She's like talking about like it was this brand new thing she thought of, like this phone that only stays in your house that your whole family can use. I mean, I remember being out, being young, and my dad teaching me if you see a payphone, check it, see if there's a quarter in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see payphone, you just go around and start checking make to see if somebody left their change in there with it. Uh those or you make it dial, you make it ring back by yeah, dial yeah. five five. And he's just like hanging uh, up like, hello. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. but it's like that was fun. Like my sister and I would go on bike rides, just exploring, you know, for mm-hmm. hours. I remember my mom would be like, Don't come home till the street lights are on, you know. Yeah. And it was barely like, can I come in and use the bathroom? I know. <laughs> I just need. I just need some water. <laughs> I just, just need drink a cup out, of water. Drink Get out the of hose. Hose, you know? yes, drink out the hose. Yes, out of the hose. Out back. There's water in the back and hose. You're like, can I just have like some nourishment? Don't miss someone. So got a bush over there with berries on it. Go get some of them berries. She's, I love you, mom. Please, <laughs> just let me have something. <laughs> But you survived. Everyone survived, though. You're all good. See, it, the tough love you're and tough. stuff. It's it made you, you tough. That's right. Tough. <laughs> and these kids are like, oh, I'll give you a million dollars if you go sleep in a haunted house with no internet, no Wi Fi. I'm like, brother, I call that a vacation. That's right. <laughs> what are you talking about? I am like, I am here for it. Wait, and you're going to pay me a million dollars to sleep in a and I'm out. I'm on my way. I'll, I'll take my Kindle with me or my just a suitcase full of books and I'll be chill for however long you want me to be there. Give me a warm blanket and just I'm good. Like I'll fire. Space, I'll space out for a day just so they're like just you chill. You just chill it. Decompress. Yeah, just and, you know, give me some buckets. I'll start cleaning shit. Why not? You know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm cleaning. This is this is how you clean things, children. I mean, I'm so done with like this electronic world that they are one of the magazines that I look at for submissions had to close their submissions because people were using AI to write stories. That's crazy. What? What? How- you can use AI to write stories, but I don't have a Jetsons flying car yet. <laughs> Where is uh-huh. How do you do that? 
AI to write. Have I mean, you I've, seen where um, you can use AI to like write a recipe for you and it'll tell you like, these are the ingredients. This is how you should cook it. I've been seeing those no, videos. I refuse to use AI because the Terminator is happening. So no, this is no. <laughs> These kids no. have not seen the Terminators. I don't know. What's going on. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I'm so done with this world. Like <laughs> it's really happening now, people. All I want is flying jet car from the Jetsons, which mm -hmm. I was promised as a child. <laughs> flying jet car. I want to live in the sky rise apartments in the clouds, and I want my flying jet car. I'm good. I want the robot maid that cleans up after me. That's what I want. See, now the thing with AI, it's, AI can't do hands. That's how you know it's fake, and it can't do a face. If you yeah, look at AI a... tech, the fingers are like all messed up, and the face there's like there's like twenty ever... fingers on each hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't know what to like. What are these things? What is? That? I think it was a. Uh, I think it was Gambino. <laughs> I think it was a uh, Gambino Iglesias posted a picture. Someone put in like uh, AI do women laughing while eating salads, and it put all these pictures. And they had like thirteen rows of teeth, and they're, they're they had, like twelve tongues in their mouth. They were crazy looking. <laughs> There's your horror AI horror right there. That is yeah. That'll be the next. Next wave is I, AI horror. People using AI to write papers and stories and books. And I am like, what in? The... Where are these programs? I mean, where, where do you find it? Like, do you just type? There's like one. I can't remember what it's stuff called. In or... It's like, um, I don't, this isn't going to be right, but it's like IT chat or something. Is, something similar to that is one of them. Bro, I don't I remember grew up exactly what it's called. Writer, okay. I don't know where the hell to find <laughs> half this shit anyway. Okay. I grew up. <laughs> You know how you type and then your fingers would get stuck between <laughs> that you would just be like, ah! Like there would be two, two keys that somehow went at the same time and, and you're like, crap. And you're in there like poking it, trying to make it go back. You're you get your right out. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah, or you just, ching! But, I mean, yeah, it, so. it, was a, it was a step up when you got the the uh, word processor. I was like, oh, big time but now. you got the kind of stuff that would erase and you could just like hit it and go, choo -choo, choo -choo, choo -choo, mm -hmm. choo -choo, and you're like, oh! Look at this! <laughs> so it, it's the little things that make me excited. Okay, like yeah. this. And talking to my mom, I said, "Did you ever think that there would come a time where you would be watching TV in your hand?" And she was I like, no. "No, I never thought." I mean, this is just insanity, y'all. This is. But like yeah, back in the day, you had a, you had a TV and a phone and a watch and a calendar. And all these different things, and now it's just all in your pocket. All it was it was thing. it was a floor model TV if you could afford it. It was like <laughs> in, inside a wooden casing. Yeah, they put the casing it. around it. Yeah, I've seen it with put the, the dials on the side. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, there's a uh, there's a uh, uh, Cosi is here in Columbus. Uh, and, you know, it's a science museum, and they have this uh, little setup in one of like the going back in history area, and there it is the little, the little uh, floor model. TV. That was like, it's got oh. like the felt over the speakers where the speakers yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those were days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we can probably talk about this for an hour, but Tracy, we know you got to. We got way off track, didn't we? <laughs> you got to skedaddle or, or. That's what and, Patreon's for. <laughs> do your do your, do your party in so your kids know you actually have a party. Actually, my kid is probably partying in my room. Um, <laughs> right now she just she yeah. likes to go in and apparently i don't make my bed to her uh i don't know her her standards <laughs> yeah. so she goes and remakes my bed and i try to get in and the sheets are so tight <laughs> that i'm just oh. like the blood I, it's I cutting off mommy's circulation we've got I the, hate the hotels it's like a hotel like yeah i was gonna say it's like a hotel I can't stand that oh that bothers me yes. so much and then george, like, george costanza you know, asking if they can like not do it so tight <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, like she, it's like she's been rolling all over it, or you roll over on something, you're like, did you have a cookie in my bed? Yeah, but you can feel the crumbs, there's chocolate yeah. stains on it. Yes, oh my gosh. Or like she'll lay in one spot, which is my spot, and then I'm like, after this, I'll go and get in the bed, and it's hot. And I'm yeah. like, I know where you were laying. They've this been all sweaty on your pillow. Yes, yeah. like, uh, hot. Yeah. it's like you got a little hot body, and your head <laughs> is sweating. And now I can't go to bed in my own bed. Why not, Mom? And then she goes and gets in her own cool bed. <laughs> you know, sweating there. You just, she's like, good night. The, joy, the joys of parenting, everybody. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's just like I got to sleep on a towel again. <laughs> did Did you want to uh, read a little bit from Rude Work, or people should just go buy it? Totally up to you. I don't have a copy of. Rude Work. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I, I don't know. I don't know. Horrible person. No, can, I want we, to. We had mentioned it earlier. I I know. You were asking. I was just. I was so excited with yeah. the Viola and the Center Man hand that I was like trying to decide what should I read because part of me is just like just read the whole damn thing, you know. Like, <laughs> I, I want you know people like I just I just want you guys to know I am working on stuff with Pee Wee. I am working on stuff with Ann. This master's program is like beating yeah. me like half to death, but. I feel like my writing is getting better. You know, a lot of people in the program are like, why are you even here? You have a published book. You're a good writer. <laughs> and I'm just like, because I want to be better. You know, I feel yeah. like there's other things that I want to learn and know and do. And even with just this class that I complain about all the time, but I'm seeing different things, things through different eyes, you know? Right. So I'm trying, y'all. I really well, so, so promise us you'll come back once some, when some of the... Uh... The Conjure future, Book 2 comes out. When all that stuff starts coming out. come back whenever you guys will have Because <laughs> this has been great. We've had a blast. Yeah, had I do want to mention something real quick. Jay, you talked about real work. I do want to read a passage because this passage stuck out to me and it made me actually think, put the book down and think about it. Like, oh, I've never thought about something that way. It's just like is this, one paragraph. Is this, a, is this a spoiler? No, it's just, it's out of context. There's no spoilers or anything. Okay. Uh, so they trudged a ways past the cemetery and then past Teddy's house, listening to the sound of sunset get louder the deeper into the forest they went. The bullfrogs called to each other and things slithered, slithered across the muddy path in front of them. Ghosts of runaway slaves led the way to where they were going. The air tasted like nervousness and smelled like cypress trees and Spanish moss. But the part that really stuck out to me was they were listening to the sounds of sunset. Like I've never thought about it that way before. The sound of the sunset. It's always yeah, you know, you people start, are watching the sunset hearing, and yeah, stuff. You start hearing the bugs at night, the, and the, the crickets and the frogs. Mm -hmm. That's such a cool way to like. I actually stopped after that paragraph. It's like I just thought about it. It's like that's such a cool way to describe it that I've never and heard anybody else know, you, describe you, it like I that before. That, and I'm just like, I wrote that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, you did. What tone was I in? <laughs> So listening to the sounds of something that was just really struggling. You like, did that's not, such a not cool AI. Way. You not did. AI. Right. No AI. Yeah. Tracy Cross wrote that. That's that was such a cool just thing to think about. The sounds yeah. of sunset. I've never heard it described like that. Yeah. And like you, know, you hear the, the crickets and the frogs and stuff. That, 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 I don't know. That really struck me. That was good. I really liked that a lot. Yeah. Oh, now see, I got to go down there. And <laughs> <say>. <laughs> If there's anyone that has a domicile in New Orleans that, you know, they're ready to give a sister up, I'm coming, you know, I will come <laughs> down. I will even try some gator, okay? I mean, I've I'll had gator for, I've had a gator po' boy, and it's pretty good. It tastes kind of like chicken. It looks like chicken. It always it looks does. so good. Like, what was that movie with the little girl, Hush Puppy? Um, yeah. That was, took place, and they had, they fried all of that gator. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, Gator looks so good. And you're like, wait, what? What are you saying, Tracy? You're a northern girl. You don't eat that like, crap. You know, but like it, um, everything looks good when it's fried, though. <laughs> it tasted it oh, tasted well, yeah. kind of like chicken, but it had like kind of I was almost like a flaky texture, more like fish. So it's kind of like the fish texture, but chicken flavor. Same with the frog legs are kind of the same way. Oh, if you've had frog legs. Nah, I've had frog yeah. legs. Where can uh just... Gator. we can talk about we could talk about food for an hour. I could yeah. just keep going on about food. <laughs> Do you know how much I love food? I weigh like 385 pounds. <laughs> I love food so much. <laughs> like, oh my God. When I found out what a chocolate ganache was, it was like <laughs> sex. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some ganache, baby. Woo. I'm like, it's cream and chocolate and water. <laughs> What God came up with this? <laughs> oh my God. And I, I like a Pee Wee Sweet Tooth, but she wants some caramels from her daddy. Yeah, yeah. The pralines. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm allergic to nuts. <laughs> my son is allergic to nuts, to, to peanuts, so he can't eat anything with nuts in it. Yeah, so you, you just imagine how good a praline would taste. It is. <laughs> just pretend <laughs> it. It's like I'm getting my EpiPen going, I'm going to get it. I'm going to eat it. I'm really going to eat it. <laughs> Pre-inject it and just eat it real quick. <laughs> exactly. Pre-inject and then eat the pralines. And then just like, my throat is still closing. Sit in the parking lot of the ER, 
pre-inject, eat it, just, just walk right in. Like, guys, I ate something I wasn't supposed to. Like, are you Tracy Cross? Yeah. It was worth it. It, it was it. Yeah, so it worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> where, where here's your five thousand dollar hospital bill, but it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> just get, I'll swallow some Benadryl and then I'll just yeah. hang on there. <laughs> Definitely. Well, <laughs> just... next next time you come, we'll we'll get into the Prince discussion and, and Brad can Well yeah, we'll do some Prince games us. next yeah. time. Okay. So where can we where can, uh, before we get out of here, where can people find you? I mean not outside your house, but like your socials, your <laughs> Instagram know, and Twitter, because, all that like, stuff. I've, I've been seeing some people eyeing me at my job. Some dude was trying to play peekaboo through the shelves, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so please don't come to the library. Yeah. <laughs> uh Tracy C. Wright is I'm on Instagram, uh Twitter. Tracy C. Rights or Tracy Cross. Tracy Cross Online is T-R-A-C-Y C-R-O-S-S Online. That's my website. And you can go there. I have to do a serious, huge updating tomorrow, which is... <laughs> You'll have to say, I was on this, the day. most amazing podcast of all time, and you put paper yes, on there. <laughs> it is the greatest. Because you guys are so chill. I mean, I was yeah. trying to make a Kentucky joke, but I can't. So oh, I'll, I'll get I'll get one in. It's usually every show I throw. Jay, in, Jay is in Ohio and I love Kentucky, so he talks shit on me all the time, and we just go back and forth. So it's all good. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm from Ohio. Yeah, but I'm see, Cleveland, so you know, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna tap out on this one because there's too many jokes <laughs> about Cleveland that's up in there. <laughs> well, this has been great. It's been a pleasure. I'm so glad to meet you and, and everyone in the chat. Everyone that's going to watch this later. Root work is what you want to grab now. It's out. And like I said, that top of the show is probably, I don't know if I'm going to say number one yet, but it's in my top five already at the year, even though we're only three months into the year, you know. And it's got a gorgeous cover. I love the cover. Oh my, it, with, with the, the girls and the missing eyes. Yeah. yeah. I love, yeah. I love the color palette of it. Just like, yeah. This, this dark greenish blue color. I love the whole thing. It was it, my idea to make it look like it was like torn around the edges. It's like yeah. add a little sepia to that and make it look like it was ripped. Like yeah, I love the style. The next book will look like skin. <laughs> nice. 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 Is it really go you need to totally make it look like skin? I you know what? I have to decide on what I'm gonna do. But yeah, if, if I do like the uh Pee-wee a gathering of spells or a gathering of weapons, I would love for that book to look like skin. And oh, then man, that'd be great. The words like sewn, looking like somebody sewed it in red. Stitched in there. Oh yes. Total yeah, that needs to happen. That totally needs to happen. Yeah. So many people would be so sick. They'd just be like, ah, oh, she did it. You know, just <laughs> but you know, people would be like, Hey, have you read that book that looks like skin? And they'd be talking about it. That'd be great. They know exactly what it is, right? When you say skin. Yeah. yeah that skin cool. cover book. And they'd be like, Yeah, that's Tracy yeah. Cross. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll just give a little blood and then we'll put it in there too. Like, oh, shit. Mix it, mix it, mix it in with the ink. Yeah, yeah, like they used to do with the comic books. They yeah. totally did that, you know. Or there was once where Stephen King was signing books. And he cut himself on a stapler. So he was like bleeding. And as he was bleeding, he was still signing books. And people were getting pissed because they didn't get the books with the Stephen King blood on it. Right. Because you know those are worth a lot of money. Yeah, they were just like, you know, we want, uh uh. You didn't cut yourself on my book. I want the Stephen King blood on my book. You know? Bleed on my book, please, Stephen. Come on. And, and, and that, that blood probably has so much coke in it that it was. <laughs> the books have run it just away. It just melted through the pages. Exactly. It just ran um, away. Ran away by now or something, you know. They disintegrated. Yeah. So many things to look forward to coming in the future from Tracy. So, of course, we're going to have her back. So, again, Absolutely we can't, need to we can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's a wrap, Brad. Another successful Another. episode. Thanks for having me. For I our special guest, it. Tracy Cross. Again, Root Work. And, you know, we're going to promote the hell out of it. So, These are um, my hands, not yeah. AI. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She wrote it and not AI. She, she so. wrote it. And I am pleased that I wrote that. Because that was, <laughs> wow. <laughs> look, look at That's, that. That was a good passage, wasn't it? That was good. Yeah, I or, must have been on some really great drugs or something. That That's I a way saw. to end the show. I wrote that. Yeah. I wrote that. <laughs> I did. Mike Mike dropped right then. I wrote that. There you go. <laughs> Boom. And we're out. Yes. <laughs> that's a wrap. I'm here all, all right. week. Thank you guys for having me on. <laughs> Tracy, thanks so much for coming by and hanging out with us. It was a it was a blast to get to talk to you in person instead of just over email. Okay. <laughs> See y'all. Jay. I love you, Jay. I know you do. I know you do.